Is that, is that how we stream? It's been a minute. What's going on, guys? Okay. Um, today, we have a Honda CRV. We're going to be doing five in the back, 20 in the front, and then a 5% shade band. Um, I burned away a fair amount of time setting up the front. I have a showroom, and uh, I haven't streamed here for a minute. So uh, I've set up the GoPro. Let's start working on that. And then getting my stuff in order. Easy money. <laughs> What's up, Lionel? How you doing? Uh-oh. I think my headphones just disconnected. Tim! Where is my software? I heard it coming over there. I don't know why it would have changed. That's super weird. Okay, maybe maybe now. Hopefully it just didn't disconnect and then like reconnect. That's the worst. Beep, beep, beep. So I have been, uh, I've been working on the showroom for like the past week. It's a combination of, it's been slow. And I've also pushed off appointments when I got in the middle of doing the showroom. <laughs> Can't wait to see you knock this out of the park. Oh, I hope it goes that way. I actually haven't tinted for like a week now. I know, crazy, right? So like we had a bit of a slow spurt and that's likely to happen again um, just because of the time of year that it is. But taking advantage of when it gets slow is, uh, is very important. So um, one of the, I, I was just, I, I was finished up with a, with a job, I think, or a smaller job or something. And then I was just looking at the showroom and I was like, now would be a good time to actually work on that. So we grabbed some paint and just decided to paint it. Next thing you know, we're ripping up the floor. And, uh, and now the whole thing's done. So I'm going to switch over to the GoPro here in a second. And I'll give a tour, brief tour. And then we'll do the car. And then for those of you that are tuning in later on who aren't going to hear this part, we'll go back through it. Man, it was, uh, it was a lot. <laughs> this is a lot of annoying work. I don't even know what I'm doing with any of it. Okay, cool. I have a signal. All right, so bear with me. Uh-oh. That's... That's the worst right there. You never want to see that. Just pure black screen. Um, that means possibly something got disconnected. Um, I know you guys can hear me. Uh, da -da. Flip to fit to screen. Yeah, I got nothing. All right, two seconds. Okay. I saw the supervisor taking a coffee break watching Coco. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. Uh, he's funny. Hey, there we go. Nothing a good old plug and. Um. Nothing a good old plug and unplug, replug can can fix. 
Okay, cool. So we should be good to go now. So um, yeah, we're gonna take a brief tour of the upfront. Except. LKB. LKB Python's super chatted $5. WTF, I caught this live at the start. <laughs> You did, congrats. LKB, good to have you today. Thank you so much for the five, I appreciate that. You wanna see the showroom? We're gonna, we're gonna go do that right now. Something like this. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we've streamed. Everything's covered in, uh, in sawdust. Good? Yeah? It is good. Okay, let me do a little smudge smudge wipe here. There you go, give you all seizures or something. Yeah, so we have the lights kind of going crazy. This all, this is, needs to be cleaned up still, but wah! I don't usually take you guys up here because for a long time, this has just been brown carpet, olive-ish walls, ceiling tile mess. Like it's just, it hasn't, it was kind of clean, it just wasn't good looking. <laughs> so what I ended up doing is like, I've had the couch, table, rug, that table. That's all, that's all been here. Um, what's new, actually that wall's been here too. What's new is obviously this, which is just super cool. I have it on crazy lights right now. I'm, we just got those up yesterday, so I'm playing around with those a little bit. I'm going to make them match the outside ones, I think. Maybe a little less bright. But yeah, we painted all this. We changed this out for daylight bulbs, which it was all dingy yellow. So anytime you saw it on camera, it made it look even worse. Um, it looked even worse than it, than it probably was. And then we did the floors. The floors was the biggest thing. The floors was like we ripped up old carpet, and we did something that I learned about called uh, a floating laminate floor which is basically like a super easy to understand type of flooring. My edges are, are pretty crap, but we hid most of them with this trim. So basically you have a, a plastic laminate, and then you just put these like snap laminate things all together. So yeah, it all looks, it all turned out really, really good. Now it's all just kind of big, open, nice and clean. Ugh. That's my heat box demo, by the way, which I want to figure out something a little bit cleaner, but it still looks good. So if you guys ever want to know, we can finally run back up here and do this, do that little thing. So yeah, that is currently the upfront space. So now when you look through this window, <laughs> this is fun. I like it. I'm happy I finally have like a clean up front room because this space is, uh, is around the back corner of an industrial building. So it's not like an independent freestanding building. And, uh, you know, that, it, that's never been like a big deal to me because I don't want just general walk-in traffic. I like going by appointments, I like scheduling things out, and I like not having to jump back up and forth. Jump back up here to there, like it, it's, it's slightly unwelcoming from the outside if you don't have an appointment. If you know you have an appointment, you're kind of like, is, is this, the this is the place, this is the place? But on top of that, when you walk in, if you've seen the videos, you're like, ooh, but if you see the showroom and you never saw the videos, you're kind of like, ah. but it's never been a business killer for me. Now it's just when people actually find this place, they're like, is this the place? And they walk in and it'll be like, Woo. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just much better all the way around. So that's been the past week. Did you install that window or was it already there? No, it was already there. Yep, that's always been there. It's just always looked dingy and dark. 
Um, and then sometimes I'll have those lights off entirely and just kind of black out that space. I just never go up front. Oh yeah, we gotta do tape. Oh man, we gotta do a whole bunch of stuff. We gotta tin a car. I've been using these knives for construction. Needs a coffee table. It does have a coffee table, but like a coffee bar spot right up there. So um, my wife had me bring the Keurig over here and I have to clean it out and get that going. So it hasn't been a huge priority, but things to make people feel welcome is, uh, is much appreciated. Mostly because it's like, I get a fair amount of people that drop off. So it's just kind of like, I didn't want the Keurig sitting on hot all the time, but we'll set it up. Let's roll these down. Let's make sure we're not gonna have any. Let's get to taping. Is this how we tin a car? That's how we tin a car. Do you have a video reviewing Apex? Uh, no. No, I have a stream where I was installing it. It looks good, it installs good. Um, and there were just a couple of small issues I had. Well, actually one of them was a bigger issue I had on my, on the Blazer when I put it on there. Um, but it's nothing that they wouldn't take care of. Uh, it just, the, when, when you're going to, 95% IR rejection. I want to compare it to some other ones first before I do because I, I don't think it's fair without any other type of like super ceramic comparisons. But I've been distracted with other stuff. We're coming into winter, so it's like I feel like it's like we're, we're having a <laughs> there goes my tape roll. We're um, not selling as many ceramic jobs as we were, and that's just, you know, it's colder, so people walk in and like, ah, oh, whatever. It's not, it's not hot for that long, and then summer comes around and they're like, oh, dang, I want that ceramic. <laughs> so, but we do have a Tesla uh, coming in on the 20th. That'll be actually a big stream. We're doing a full Model 3 with a windshield. That's going to be in Pro Nano. What kind of tape? Uh, it's uh, it's Lowe's tape, house wrap tape actually. It's crazy how much of an impulse tint is. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that. Tint tint is definitely one of those where it's like people wake up one morning and then they're just like, I gotta go get my car tinted. Whoa, I don't think I've ever had that happen. When you drop. <clears throat> like a roll of anything under a car, it sits right in the middle. It's like dead center of the car where you can't reach it. I don't think I've ever managed to kick it to the other side of the car exactly where I needed it. That was pretty awesome, but now it's all like rolled up. <laughs> Finally, you're back. I am, at least for today. No, we got we got some stuff lined up. There is going to be some intermittentness though. It's just kind of the way the season goes. And I mean, last year um, I had a baby, so that was a good excuse. This place has been around for about a year. A um, little bit over that, but I, I've been in a physical space like this for the past year now. Um, and there's, it's just it's gonna get busy and then it's gonna all of a sudden slow down. Especially because I don't cater to impulse. It's, it's been super annoying actually. I've had, I've gotten like a number of phone calls. Um, 
people wanting to get them in like the same day. And that's when I was working on the showroom. So I could have taken in some work that way. Actually, I could have taken in a fair amount of work that way. But getting my regular type of clients that schedule out a little bit farther, um, I wasn't getting really much of that at all. So I have some of that lined up right now. Um, but not as much as I'd like. So it's definitely like we had a lot of up and downs. And now we're definitely in more of a down. <laughs> but like I said, take advantage of it. Because I don't think I, that room would not be done right now. It, fine, it, like, ah, it's, so, I'm so happy we got that done. Then when you come into the busy season, right? Then all those things that you could have done will then be done. And you, you just won't have time for it when it gets really busy. You make whatever excuses. But all in all, I got to add up how much I spent on the front. A good amount was like extra supplies and tools. The biggest expense was the floor, but like the floor was a dollar a square. So it was like 500, like just under a dollar a square. So it was just under like, it was like 500 bucks for the whole floor, which is just crazy. But then you have to get something called an underlayment. And I, like, I didn't know anything about flooring, but I, I looked up a bunch of videos, so now I'm an uh, expert, right? You need some type of underlayment, so it's, it's sitting on something soft and not just like, <laughs> not just like bare concrete going <laughs> So that costs another like, what was it? It was like 30 cents a square foot or something. Maybe, maybe not quite that. It was like another 100 and like 200 bucks, I think, for the whole underlayment. So you got to put that in your cost. Some of them come with it. But I was looking around um, at, you know, a lot of, lot of flooring stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards. And square footage is like, on average, you'll find stuff for maybe like $1.20 to $1.80. And then you can easily go two, three, like two fifty to three dollars a square foot. But I was looking for like the least expensive, lightest floor that I could find. And that was it for like a dollar. And it was mostly out of stock everywhere. So it was really cool. I got that, and then we start. We ripped up all the carpet, which sucked. It was so dirty. It was like a beach. After I was done pulling, pulling all that, it was gross. And then there's like carpet glue underneath it. So that's one reason I opted to do the floor that I did up front. You just, you put the underlayment over it and then you slap the floor on top of it and you're like, all right, good to go. I could literally rip it all out very easily if I wanted to and it'd be perfectly fine to put somewhere else. It all, it's like snap together flooring. Like it's super easy stuff or else I wouldn't have been able to do it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not super crafty. I'm not super handy with that. I come up with like, some creative things, but I like actually went out and bought a circular saw for this one. It was, that wasn't much, that was like 60 bucks. And I'm glad I did. With more lighting, yeah, right? Like look, look through this window right now. <laughs> um, I'm still playing around with the lights. I want them to be like a little bit slower I want them to match that. I couldn't figure out how to get them to match, though. I don't know why it was being annoying, but they're the exact same lights. But I want them to do that or just like a less 
like, bah! but for now, I was like, ah, screw it. I'm going to be tinning, so we'll just leave that in the back. It'll be fun. Good stuff. <laughs> Is Pro Nano worth the extra compared to carbon? Yes, definitely. In compared to 5% VLT, if similar spec. You know, that's an interesting one. I, mm, I, I'm going to say yes, but I, you know, you might got me on that one. On 5%, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I've never taken 5% and put them on the front doors and compared it to like, you know, a 35% ceramic. Cause you're right, the more carbon that you add, that's like what the ceramic does. The more carbon that you add, the more heat that it's gonna block as well. I heard dryer sheets are bad for health. Yes, they are actually, I'm a poor example. Yeah, you can look up quite a few articles. It's, it's really easy stuff to find. Um, oh, I needed one more tape for that. So we kicked it a little early. Yeah, you really shouldn't be handling them with just bare skin. And with window tint, you know, you have doing that multiple years. <laughs> it's probably not great. I eat dryer sheets. Did you ever eat paint chips as a kid? <sighs> like breathing them or touching them? Uh, just look it up. I'm not, I'm pretty sure both. <laughs> um, what plotter is that? Do you get, oh, that is the Workhorse One. You can find that on Plotter Depot. So, plotter software. That link will take you to where I got the plotter. Is this the GoPro 10? Yes, it is. And I think it's a, it's a much, compared to the eight, it's a really good improvement. I like the 10 a lot. I'd have to see the nine again because I bought it when it first came out and like I was trying to stream directly from it. And like, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. What's an alternative to dryer sheets? Oh, get dry shrink prep. Dry shrink prep's great. It's just sometimes a little extra sticky. So I kind of got in the habit of just throwing dryer sheets back on. I've done dryer sheets for years and years, but do as I do as I recommend, not as I do. <laughs> um, nice to you recommend it. I have the eight. So if you are doing, I haven't even tried to stream directly off of the ten, but when it's plugged into an HDMI transmitter, it's noticeably clearer and noticeably smoother. Like the GoPro eight says it does sixty frames per second. I, it, they're like a smudgy 60 frames per second compared to this. I don't know. This is like actual 60 frames per second. I'm pretty sure I'm cutting with a blade <laughs> that I was using for construction. So I got to change that out like now. Okay, cool. But we didn't screw ourselves over with the height of this. On difficult windows, I use dryer sheet. Yeah, that's kind of like what I got into. I like th I couldn't explain it. There was just like sometimes I'd whip out my carbon, and everything would be fine. And then sometimes I'd have it, and it's like even on an easy back window, it was just sticking. And I scrapped three pieces back to back to back, threw a dryer sheet on, and everything was fine. So, like it just it can happen sometimes. I think ambient humidity and stuff has a lot to do with it. But 
it's a little bit of guessing. I, I can't definitively say what happened. It's just, it was, <laughs> it was really annoying when it happened. So I had to just like, oh, <laughs> just gonna go back to this real quick. And then that's what we've been doing. We're flipping back and forth. And then we kind of just started using dryer sheets again. But same thing with dryer sheets. They're, they're not all the same. So don't just go buy any generic dryer sheets that you can find. Um, what was it? Tide? No, Bounce. Bounce and Snuggles. Those are two that are really good. Generic ones are terrible. So I think a similar thing with like dry shrink prep. I think there could be like a normal one. And then there could be like a less tacky one. but it's kind of a lot to make a whole other skew and explain the difference that way. It, but it's kind of like what Tint Slime had to do with like, made a little more sense for them though. Why hand cutting versus using your plotter? Because it's better. Plotter's, plotter is a derpy assistant over there. He helps out here and there. So we might use them for the back windows. But for it's mainly sizing them up top edges. Top edges are the ones where that to me really matters a lot. So I like to get them as close as I can and every window is a little bit different. So, getting it close enough. Plotter does okay. Depends on the window too. So it's not even like you really know what you're gonna get until you get it up there. With the GoPro you're using the HDMI transmitter, I am, yes. And it's, I, I'm, never, I'm never going back. It's always gonna be this. It's clear. Um, it's manageable and the wireless part, like just streaming off of the GoPro worked well enough, but it still had random issues that I could never figure out. You know, when you're streaming directly off of it, there's always this like delay, this audio delay that changes. So if you're using a separate mic, the separate mic will sound better, but trying to sync up the two, it's really annoying. So this, if you change your, if you're on a decent internet connection and you change it to 1080, 60, you might not see a huge difference off of just leaving it at 480, but 1080, 60 compared to the old videos, it's, it's way better. because it's literally like just carrying around the GoPro. So a couple of little things I'm gonna add um, is going to be the max lens mod so I can have uh, something called horizon lock. But funny enough with the 10, that update still hasn't come out yet. GoPro's terrible. I'm half thinking that they'll never come out with it and they'll just quietly like, oh yeah, the Max, Max Lens mod. Oh yeah, it didn't sell very well, so uh, we're just not gonna support it on the new one. But they're saying that they are. <laughs> so we'll see. GoPro took a long time to come out with even the media mod after they released it. They're like, we're releasing the GoPro 9 or 8 with the media mod. And then the media mod took like a year the 8 to the 10 is a, is a great upgrade. Genuinely is. I took the 9 back immediately. But maybe with some like software tweaks it got better. I, I don't know. But the 10 uh, is significantly better. You know, kind of like 
I didn't even see the upgrade from going like, you know, one year from a phone to a phone, right? Like it gets slightly faster, gets slightly better. This was one of those generation leaps for me that like the eight to the 10 was a big one. How many cars could you do in a day by yourself? I work by myself at a shop and I'm getting the hang of it. Um, so when I was really focused on getting a lot of work done, um, I was doing like five to six full cars and like a, that was, the, sometimes there was like a couple sets of doors in there. Generally that wasn't with full windshields though. Like they, most of them weren't. There might be like one full windshield. When you're doing like five or six full ones, um, I, w I was, whoa, this has been sitting out for a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got some dust on it. We'll cut all that off. Um, five to like five to six full cars, and then later on, I was. Oh, I gotta take care of that. They keep doing that. Facebook is super annoying. I hope that didn't leave a bunch of sawdust on my window. Still, we gotta move over there. We're a little bit, we're a little bit farther. There we go. What were we talking about? Oh yeah. So I used to like run around to a handful of shops and how many cars you can do in a day depends on a couple of things. Um, you can get a lot done with hand cutting. I'd, you, I'd argue you can get, you can get more done, well, not really, argument here, but you can get more done with an assistant and a plotter. So that's a good way to like up your production. The problem just becomes quality of those patterns. I'm gonna leave it like that. But when I was really hustling, which I don't like to do much anymore, um, yeah, there were, there were like five, generally like, it was like five full cars and then six was like starting to like really push it. And then there were always those days where there would be like nothing. And then you'd, you'd come around to like three, three thirty in the afternoon and then two people would want to get their car done and you close it like, <laughs> what is it? You close it like five thirty, six o'clock. And then they show up, one's at four, one's at five, and it was just like, okay, now I just gotta like burn through these cars as fast as I can. How many cars do you do now? I schedule like two appointments now. Those are full car appointments, and it leaves room for full windshield too, which a lot of people have added. Um, the reason I, whoa, thank you. Max Aredondo super chatted $4.99. Thank you for answering my questions and making these videos. Call me, they definitely help me out before I work <laughs> cool. on the same car types. Oh, that's super cool. Max, thank you so much for the five. I really appreciate that one. You're very welcome. Much, much appreciated. Yeah, the, I do a couple in a day because trying to figure out streaming with that, with like a regular schedule, just became too much of a problem. So I was booking, I think, you know, three, I was booking pretty much like regular schedules. But, you know, when you're starting, there's a, there's a couple of things when, when you're starting. Um, first, you don't have as much work. So if I'm trying to stream, and I'm trying to get cars done, I would have a day where I do, you know, three cars in the day, and then, oh look, I didn't have time to stream any of them because I gotta check this person in, I gotta figure out what they want, I gotta check them out, 
Um, then I got this person dropping off in the middle of it, and then I have technical problems, and then, you know, it's a lot of bouncing around, and then there's just too many things going on, and then you also have phone calls that you're trying to field on top of that. It's just, it's too much. So eventually I set, when, it, when I had the city notice, I scheduled one car per day, and I really liked that, but I wanted it to be a little bit better than that, because if you're just doing one car in a day, and you're charging like 250 to do that car. It's not a great day. It's fine, but you have other stuff to pay for, so you need to make more money. <laughs> so that's where like two cars came in, and I just spaced them apart reasonably far. And I've kind of whittled that down to like a 10 o'clock and a 1 o'clock. And then I'll maneuver things around a little bit if I have to. And there's some days that I'll do something extra and I, I just won't stream. Or I just will do those cars and not stream at all. It just, it depends on frequency. So if you guys thought I was doing like 50 cars in the background, no, I was working on a showroom. I was working on something that I've never done before. And then I wanted to stream some of it, but I also needed help, and it just, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was good to not at the same time. It's just trying to focus on make it, make it look good. Does the tin get hazy when squeegee too much? No, not at all. You can't squeegee a window to be hazy. You're just squeegeeing water out of it. You'll be totally fine. Where haziness can come from, eh, it's just, just slightly, slightly more. Um. Sorry, there's chat's busy. Appreciate it. Did you correct the colors on the GoPro? No, actually, I haven't even done a LUT. On the 8, I paid somebody on Fiverr to make a LUT. That, that helps correct some stuff. Um, but with this lighting, it's been, it's been pretty good. It might be like a little strong on saturation, which you could just tone down, but yeah, I haven't had to change anything. Out of camera, it's just, they did a lot right with this one. I'm happy. Um, how much do you think I should charge for a full five, five, full five window car? Uh, I'm practicing, and they're good. If you are putting out good work with, you know, good film, there's no reason just because you're new that you have to charge any less than anybody else. It actually hurts you more to charge less uh, in the beginning. Um, but I don't want, like, if you're practicing on, like, friends and family, it's kind of, like, it's, it's about where you're at. Like, friends and family, they, like, mostly family can kind of understand, like, oh, they're, they're learning. They'll take all day with my car. I don't mind. You know, it's like a, going to a school for a haircut or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you can sometimes get free haircuts that way. Or you can go to a professional. Um, but the, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, so there's a little bit of wiggle room in there with like friends and family and getting your cart and like practicing. But if you're just taking on random people, um, you don't want to get known as the cheap guy or just less expensive, unless that's like where you know you you just want to stay ultra competitive, farther out. So you're putting time, you're putting work. <laughs> well, let's just throw that on the ground. Bye bye. Um, so you're getting a lot of stuff done, or I mean, you're you're doing good work. There's at the end of the day, if it's a good job, it's a good job. So. I don't think 
taking all day with somebody's car, putting a good job out, if anything, that deserves more because you put all this effort into it. So there, and there isn't really any like official, official expectations from customers on timeframes either. There's a lot of people that just don't know. Like, because it's like a mechanic, right? If you go to a mechanic, the prices are all over the place because it's, it's dependent on vehicle parts and stuff. So you get a quote, you get a time frame, and you're just like, well, that's just what it is, and that's just how long it's going to take. So there is some competitive, especially in the beginning, there's going to be people that are calling you, calling somebody else. But if they just call you first and they're like from a referral, that's where it becomes really important. Because if you tinted somebody's vehicle and then they referred somebody over to you, that person didn't shop around anywhere else. They're going to you off of a referral. So whatever you tell them is like, oh, okay, that's just what it is. They did good work. I want good work. So that's where you have a lot more flexibility in um, charging, you know, what you feel is appropriate to charge. There's people that'll charge a hundred bucks and then I start out here at 240 and I'm going to change that. Probably in springtime we're going to be upping prices. I think I'm just going to take a bigger jump, but it depends on how much work that I have coming in. I think we're going to go um, from 240 to 295. I think we're going to go just under three. That's without a windshield. Where can I find you in stock? They're out of stock. They're, all, they're out of stock on their website always when I look there. Uh, what geo? Um, give them a call and see what's up. If there's something that you want that's out of stock, just give them a call. Um, I haven't heard any stock issues, but everything that I ordered just got filled, so I didn't hear of anything else. Did I change this play? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Do you give your customers a time frame or just let them know when it's ready? Oh, I'm so mad. I've got extra blades in my car outside and I forgot because I have, th ah, I have like three different types of blades that I want to try out. Do you know they make thin, thinner, like, okay, so they're all carbon though, but they make regular stainless, they make carbon, and they make a thin version, and they have a sharp and an ultra sharp. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna try ultra sharp, see how that is. Um, do you give your customers a time frame or just let them know when it's ready? Um, I give them a time frame, but there's a lot of people, there, there's actually quite a few shops that is just like drop off first come, first serve, we don't take any appointments. And then we'll call you when it's done. So just drop off with us in the morning. Um, I, wanna, I don't remember exactly, but my dad's shop might have transitioned to that, where they're just like, yeah, drop it off with us. Sorry, sorry it's inconvenient, but we've got enough people that wanna get it done. Because ap appointments have pretty major pros and cons. So if you schedule an appointment without a deposit and then you blocked off two, three hours worth of time to do that car and then they just don't show up, and there's two, three hours of your day that you're mad about that you would have happily given to somebody else. So if you have like this free flowing schedule, that's not a problem for you. But um, if you schedule appointments and they all show up on time, everything's great and you have a nice spaced out day, you know exactly what's coming in and, and it's a little bit more relaxing. Um, I think I left my, oh, I know where they are. Hang on. Cannon. I'll be right back. You take it.
How do you how do you leave the car door open without making much noise? Uh, this one just wants to stay quiet. It just depends on the car. Some some are quiet and some aren't, but you can latch them. You can latch them and then they'll stop ding dinging on you. Just don't close it with the door latched. Um, oh yeah, somebody was asking about this little carpet shield holder. So this is, um, if you look at a place called the Container Store, containerstore.com, um, this is their Eufy line. Uh, and this right here is a dual track. Uh, you can find these in like shelving closet section at hardware stores. So like Home Depot and stuff. It's got a rail, those come down. So I can just take a box off and these brackets, I can, I can move these bars any which way. Um, and these are just six inch brackets that just slot in. So a lot of these are pretty universally compatible. Probably because they're all made from the same place. <laughs> and, uh, and then this was just a longer bracket that I found at the container store. And then it's got little closet hangers. So it's just all spaced out like perfectly um, to hold all the rolls, make it look nice and pretty, and then it's easy to grab and stays out of the way. I put that together when I was in the garage. But turns out it's just nice for any shop. All right, can we still tint a car? There's a lot of like smears and stuff on this one. So we're gonna just give them all a good scrape. I gotta remind myself that I'm still, still gotta do a windshield strip. Um, what was that? Premium super, super Premium Super Charcoal, <laughs> I like that name, uh, versus Pro Classic, any major differences between the two? Um, that, as far as coloring and stuff, there might be a little bit of difference there. There should both be color-stable dyed films. You'll do great with both of them. I think the biggest difference is gonna be, um, on that one, is probably gonna be branding. So it depends on what you, like, if, if you kinda advertise the films that you install, which in a lot of cases, it just doesn't matter. People are coming to you for a tint job, but you know, so they're, they might ask, or you might have a display with something that says what it is. So branding's really gonna be the biggest difference there. Windshield strip on the plotter, uh, we can look. I'm not gonna be I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> they haven't had good windshield options. Just throwing that out there. So, if anything, probably for the back window and the quarters. But again, I, I put. I forgot. I put glass aid on the back, so I don't even know if I'm going to do it. We've done it with quite a few vehicles, on just like the back three. So, it's just a quick, easy one to kind of just cut out and install, so it's not really gonna matter one way or the other, and it's already set up for hand cutting. Can you, should you always do double window? You mean like double cutting? If that's the question, then no, you don't have to. It's a big time saver though. It's one of the easiest things that you can do to majorly speed up your time. Because rather than individually cutting out four windows, you just cut out two. It saves a lot of time. That's where a plotter would kick somebody's ass pretty, pretty hard if you were individually cutting all of them.
Oh, that's the, that is the best way. I think that's the best way to teach somebody. Yep, absolutely. So the question was, I'm thinking of, of hiring employees, but instead of teaching them how to tint, I was thinking of using the method that you were talking about the other day, where one person preps, the other, uh, another cuts. Um, a plotter is actually, could, could play a big hand in that. Because, um, I mean, just a lot of places, they, they, they have people do specialty things, or like, this is, this is your job. So, a nice, efficient shop really has employees doing what they're best at. So, it's just like, you know, it depends on how much work that you're bringing in. So, you know, the tinner tints the whole car, right? Prep, cut, shrink, clean, install. The tinner can do it all. But there's some parts about that that are much easier to learn and do than others. So if you can have somebody else take care of those things for you, then yeah, you're gonna save, you're gonna save a lot of time. So like, if, especially if you add a plotter into the mix, you're just, you're gonna become a tint factory. So you have somebody, like you talk to the customer, right? Somebody else can pull in the car and they can start cleaning the windows, taping them, however you prep them, they can do all that. And then a big thing is cutting. So that's where if you had a plotter, they go over to the plotter, they cut everything out, boom, then you're shrinking and installing. And then you can start teaching them those extra things as they get better and more competent. You know what I mean? So as they're kind of learning and getting better at, at what, what their different tasks are, saving you time and showing ambition, then you know if they're more, you, you know if they're worth teaching anyways. Because I've been there where <laughs> brought brand new people in, tried to teach them literally everything and then after three months, they completely fall off. And you're like, well, that was a waste of three months. But if you can bring in somebody, and within, within a week, you can teach them how to already save you time, then it doesn't matter. Then it doesn't matter how many you bring in. Like, you, you can just keep finding new good people, right? Or new people and, until you find somebody that sticks. That's where I put them all. <laughs> I gotta organize that. I noticed that you didn't mess the tweeter. Is it necessary? Um, it'd probably be helpful, but I wouldn't say it's necessary. You got me. <laughs> you wanna just kind of like, the, so I come from not taping like anything and just spraying and, and tinting. And 99% of the time, everything's fine. So I can't always guarantee that everything's always gonna be okay. But usually this type of stuff is just extra to make people feel better and to show a lot more care put into every car. And I'm happy to do that. So the little things like the, the tweeters, yeah, I, I should have done something. <laughs> um, if you tint right up to the dot matrix but not cover it on the windshield, will the light shine through? Yes, it'll be super annoying. I, hope, I wonder if that's a scratch. It kind of looks like a scratch to me. We're gonna investigate. There's like some mark here. Nope, no scratch. That's cool. It was just a sharp dirt line of some type. Yeah, you're gonna you always wanna overlap uh the dots. It it just looks better. There's some lazy people that somehow cut around the dots 
for like windshield strips. I just think it's super dumb. They do it because they are dumb. I don't know. They're lazy. They're just about speed. What now? Uh, mine shows on some part of the windshield and not on the other parts. It's sad because that matrix is uneven. Um, sometimes they'll dry uneven where it's not going to look as uniform on the outside where you'll have some spots that stick really nice and then some spots that don't. Um, you can kind of warm up the glass after the fact and try and stick it down a little bit better, but it, dots are a hard thing to do. Either you like sand them completely flush to the window or you just like roll the dot lottery dice and it's just like it's just kind of how they are um what psi do you use um on the keg i use like i think like 80 something like that more pressure, more spray. Or hard, harsher spray. More flow. No matter how much clay I use, the dots keep giving off dirt too. They'll, uh, they'll clean eventually, but it's kind of like if you're wearing them out, there'll be like a forever waterfall of, of dirt there. So like if you were sanding them, that'll take them down faster. But I'll use a clay bar on like, mostly I'll focus on the defroster lines. And I'll kind of like deep scrub them. There's levels here. So you're, you can still turn out clean work with just wiping off a back window and tinning straight over it. The clay bar helps take some extra stuff off the defrosters and it helps clean uh, in between all the lines and stuff. So it just helps. But if you put a window side by side, you're gonna have a hard time telling the difference. It's just I think you get more consistent results using clay bars. And they'll take something off of the uh, off the defroster lines. So it can help them to stick more uniformly. But if you want like the most even, you gotta take those lines down. And there's people that'll do them with sandpaper. I don't really like the idea of that, but I understand why. I think the results look super great. And as long as they don't impact you know, the current running through the defrosters and they do their job, then it's all good. I think that's a, it's more of a dicey thing for me to try and take on slash teach. <laughs> I just like to leave, car came in, car goes out. If there's some random scratch on the inside of the window, you know, I could potentially get blame for that. They start asking, yeah, I use sandpaper on the inside of your window. That's like a big, you know. There's certain things that where like I intentionally wouldn't stream them because I, like, you know, leaving the door panel uncovered. I just get a whirlwind of questions about it. Like, uh, is, are you damaging the doors? Now I cover them and I don't hear anything about it anymore, like ever which is super nice. So same thing with like, you know, if I were to take a torch to somebody's back window, there's, there's a big shock factor there. Is it faster? Yeah. Does it do a good job? Yeah. Should I learn it? Probably. But I don't because impressions. <laughs> We've played around with it on some things, but it's like you get, you know, 
you get a nice new car in here, you start taking torches to them, and it's like, it's mostly for tenors. If the customer sees it, it it's like, ah! Or it has the potential to do that. It depends on the person. But I remember when, my reaction when I first saw the torch. I was like, that's so unnecessary. Why would you do that? So with, with customers, you know, just seeing it being cut, like, isn't it going on the inside? So there's just, there's a lot more explaining there. Plus, I don't think anybody should learn to do a torch right in the beginning. Learn that, learn that a little bit later on. Customers shouldn't be telling you how to do your job. <laughs> there's, they're, they're not, but there's some things that you gotta keep in mind for good impressions and this is where I go a little back and forth on taking apart somebody's vehicle. I think there's, there's those things that just make somebody feel uneasy. You're not wrong for doing it. You, if the end result is the car looks great and nothing was damaged, then every, like, and it didn't take you all day to do, or you charged accordingly for it, then like more power to you. But there's all these like these little things, right? Like you wouldn't know that at most shops. Somebody comes in, they give the keys, you take it into the back, it gets magically tinted, it gets pulled out, they get their keys back, boom. Everything's been fine, right? You've been doing that for number of years. But when people really see that, that's where there can be some, uh, you know what I mean? Like what mechanics have to do to fix somebody's car sometimes, it's better that the customers don't always see what they had to do to fix it. But at the end of the day, if the customer's happy with it, that's, that's all that matters. Can you use too much soap in a keg? Cause glue to streak? No, too much soap isn't gonna cause the glue to streak. Um, it'll just make the tint slide around a lot. And like, you'll know if you have like way too much soap because you, your eyes will start to hurt because there's just be so much soap in the air. Even with it saying no tears. So that's, I don't know, that's kind of where I'm coming from on a lot of this stuff. It's, I'm gonna tin a car how I feel is best to do it, and I think everybody should. You're the professional. I mean, you have to get in the car to tin it, right? But there's things that you can do and different approaches that you can take so everybody's a happy camper through the whole thing and you don't have to explain as much, right? Where somebody like looks at the video and they're just like, oh, Put care into it. Look like he, he knows what he's doing. Sweet. We're, it's not even a second thought about any of that. It's just, I want to take my car there. That's what, that's what we go for. I saw your waiting room. It looks very nice. Thank you. <laughs> it looks nice now, finally. I was going for the past year ignoring the dungeon of a of a front room that it was but it definitely looks good now <laughs> I showed it I posted it in the group and then I'll I'll show you guys again We we did a little walk through near the beginning of the stream and oh look at like come on <laughs> It's a little hyper up front. I'm gonna tone it down, but it was under a time crunch. Different for you because the customer can watch your stream? Mm-hmm, yeah. There's been quite a few other tenors that have been doing it too now. I've heard really positive reactions from it. You know, like going to, I think the first that I, and really only I ever saw was like, oil change places, right? 
where you drive over the, the hole and the, the elf in the ground um, like shakes your car and then, and then your stuff is all changed. And then some oil change places added some transparency with literally showing a camera of like what's going on underneath your car. It's just little things like that is, is, is super cool. So we went a little bit beyond that. <laughs> we went a little bit beyond that. Oh, Claybar's there. A little bit beyond that. But hey, I have fun with it. It's good. It's good fun. I'm glad I can still tint. <laughs> it's been a minute. Can you explain your cleaning process? Sure. You asked at a great time, actually. Okay, so I have soapy water right now. Um, this is baby shampoo with a little bit of Dawn um, off of a tint keg. This is a one inch razor blade. You can use stainless steel um, or carbon steel for the razor blades. Those are totally fine. We just gotta scrape the sticker off because they always like to put stickers on a window. And on this one, um, I noticed there were some smears and stuff on the inside of the window. So it was just looked a little extra dirty. So in those cases, I'll then take the razor blade and go over the whole thing. Um, plenty of times I won't use a razor blade um, on the glass. I'll use something different like a plastic scraper. So we have this, this is a gator blade. I have another one, um, but these are really handy. They have a nice sharp edge to them. Just be a little careful. Um, Cause you can even scratch windows with plastic scrapers, believe it or not, they'll pick up dirt and then you smear that all over the window and then scratch the hell out of it. Um, so I start with the bottom and just scrape it all. I didn't even like squeegee it off the window. My, my goal is just to loosen it all up. Then I'll pick up my film, roll down the top edge to where I have like an inch, sometimes a little bit more exposed. And I'm just putting my pattern out of the way. So this can either go on a glass board or you can stay, leave it on the car. I generally like to peel everything off of the car too. So again, we're taking that razor blade we're going over the whole glass because of what we saw earlier. So we got the sticker off and we're just doing a scrape. So you really don't have to do anything more than a scrape, but if you wanna be a little extra particular, we do have like a scrub pad. So where I um, change it up a little bit is if I use a plastic scraper, I'll then often take a scrub pad and then I'll go over the majority of the window with that. It's just a little bit more thorough, I think. With a razor blade, you're kind of just scraping the surface. With a scrub pad, you can kind of work it in a little bit more. And then I like to take a clay bar and run it over the top edge. So you can do this with a clay bar uh, along with uh, a towel. Clay bar and towel, they both work great. Um, sometimes you can get into the edges a little bit better. Hey! See how that? BRJ lifts super chatted $4.99. What would be the best way to apply tint on a car with a dash cam? Would cutting a hole for the lens work as to not affect visibility and clarity? Oh, I'll get to that in just a second. Thank you so much for the super. I just wanna finish explaining that first. So on some windows, this one is not, but some windows front doors are laminated. So that's where you'll have like a little channel up here. That's where a clay bar is exceptionally good at working all that crap out of it. So even after a clay bar, I'll still kind of wipe the top edge off with the towel, just to make sure all that's out of there. And so we scraped it, um, we scrubbed it, and now we squeegee it. So start at the top, work it all down from one side to the other. You could go from the small side to the big side or big side to the small side, doesn't matter. The point is it's all going down. So once you swept it down, 
you want to flush out those corners because that's where you moved most of your dirt. So I'll generally go over it twice just to be like extra sure, but like three, four, or five times becomes unnecessary. If you just did everything right, everything from now on should just be install problems if I have them. So I like to put the film right over my top edge now. Kind of puts it in this little void here where nothing can run into it. Peel it, spray it, and then the rest is, uh, is a regular install. So, Super Chat, what was that? Uh, BRJ with a five. So, best way to install a dash cam with window tint. Um, you can actually just stick the dash cam directly to it. It'll adjust the exposure a little bit. Um, you don't have to cut a hole in your tint. You just, I would tint the whole window or however you're doing it. I would just leave it all tinted and then put the dash cam over it. You don't need to have a hole for it. Cause like they'll, they'll auto adjust for like nighttime and daytime exposures, at least a good one will. So you should be totally fine with just mounting it right on top of the tent. So even if you're putting it over the limo, um, that might make it a little harder. So if you wanna cut a hole specifically to see a little better out of that, but I would just leave it tinted, put the dash cam on it. You literally can stick it right to the tent like you could glass um, and just see how it is. Because any other way would not look quite as nice. I tend to go for the nicer looking option. Thank you for the five. Hope that answered your question. So we're gonna get this in place. Lock these sides down. The tent will often slide around until you get some of this at the top tacked and then especially on the sides like it'll wiggle a little bit and then you just do that and then sometimes should be enough to lock that all in place I have a trouble cutting a top edge can you show me how you do it um I would be happy to unfortunately we already have all the doors cut so you can rewind a little bit and then that'll hopefully help um, Best I can tell you is uh, put out a little bit of blade. Make sure you have a nice fresh blade. Um, so if you've been using this a little bit, th the first thing you wanna do is swap out the blade entirely um, and then keep it at a, I guess we can kind of show you on this one. So you're gonna keep it at an angle like this for the most part. I keep it like a little cocked down and then just so something like that. But we already have the doors cut. Um, she stay tuned for a, another live stream. Um, I have some extra blades that I want to play around with. Um, I, NT has uh, a couple of carbon blades, they have like thin, and then they have sharp and ultra sharp. And they have those in like thin versions. So I was like, ooh, what are these? My guess is they'll dull faster, but could be super good for top edges. Where's the door cover from? Carpet shield. <laughs> Uh, we are doing, uh, we're doing carbon. How flimsy is the shank? It's not quite as strong as the white ones, but I haven't ever had one break on me. This is a little bit tighter here in some of the spots. So like, I don't know, reasonably flimsy, but definitely we'll get in and do the job. 
I've never snapped one of these though. Just like the easy reaches. Like I'll see some people snap the easy reaches, and you, I, putting putting a little bit, a little bit of pressure on that. <laughs> some people are hard on their tools. I was just happy to get them in green. I was so happy to get them in green. I bought some, is I bought some cake decoration ones. Oh, yeah, those will work I, I, for the most part. I have some, okay, they, they're, there's different ones. So it's a palette knife. I didn't know this till much later. Um, but I know when they, when they got their start into, into window tinning. They have a good, good shank story. So I first saw them at 44 Tools. 44 Tools had an array of five different ones. And they're like, we're sampling these different tools. And we, we think some of these might be helpful. For, so at one of their events, they took a poll from everybody that was there on what ones they thought people would like to use. And then they were going to offer them on their site. So this design was one of them. This, turned, it turns out all of them were just like it was a palette knife set. <laughs> but we're, we're window artists. We're not necessarily painting artists. So somewhere here I have some junky ones. Oh, no, they're right in here. And then I should have a good one. Ooh, look, I got all of them. And then I also got my original yellow one. Look at that. So I can go through, I can go through all the shanks. So when we were, when I was working with uh, Tin Squad, um, or like slash Sun Distributing, um, they were trying to stock uh, the white shanks, and then they they got these, and we dubbed these, we dubbed these the shunk. <laughs> so this looks an awful lot like this one. So this is like, this is a little bit of a stronger plastic. It still has like a similar bend here, but it's a little bit more sturdy everywhere else. This one, uh, it still, I, it still works great. In my opinion, it might feel like a little bit more flimsy, but they're, I think they're similar enough. They got the same type of sharpness at the bottom. But uh, this yellow one, this is what it used to be before. And then I was able to turn them green. So yay. Um, and then as far as these go, um, this shunk <laughs> was the derpy one. So on some seals, it would be totally fine. And on this one, it, it looks like it'll just squeak in there. But on some of them, it was like more often than not, it's got a more blunted edge on it. It's a little curved, but this one is a little bit slimmer and a little bit sharper. So you'd keep trying to use it, and more often than not, it would just bump on the seals. So we kept looking around, or he kept looking around, Rick kept looking around until he found these ones. So yeah, it was the derpy shank. So these, I think, are the strongest. But I mean, come on, they're not green. <laughs> so whatever floats your boat. But yeah, you can find any number of like palette knives um, in art sections and stuff. You can find them at Home Depot, dollar stores. People have found them um, in a lot of different places. So it's if you're in a pinch, um, knowing where to go to find them, like just ASAP, is really helpful. Just they kind of vary. They're not. They're definitely not all the same, even though they can look really, really similar. So the ones that the tint stores carry, they're just a little bit better for the job, unless you just happen to come across one that, like, yeah, this is the same. So you might be able to find it somewhere else. Matt ordered all of this stuff. <laughs> I had, uh, I've got a whole bunch of them. Oh, 
a whole bunch. But when you want custom green ones, you have to get a whole bunch of them. What was that question? What's your top five foods to eat? <laughs> um, I really like breakfast foods. Bre I always go back to breakfast foods. So there might be like some random other foods, like sushi is really good. Me and my wife love getting sushi. Um, but my go-to a lot of times is just like, was always like over easy eggs, white toast, bacon, and hash browns. Like that was always really good, and coffee. So I love pancakes too, or a good crispy waffle. But more often than not, it always goes back to, to breakfast foods, especially for like dinner. Breakfast for dinner is like the best. So my wife makes lots of Filipino dishes, and um, we, so we have a lot of white rice with everything. And I wasn't really ever big on, on rice, but out of all the rices, I, white rice was, was my favorite. So Filipino breakfast is often like sunny side or over easy egg on white rice, and then some type of meat on the side. So beef tapa, that was really good. That, that's one of my favorites. Um, uh, tocino and uh, longanisa, those are kind of like the staple ones. I miss beef tapa, I haven't had that in a while. There was a place that we'd go to called the Pancake House. Waffle? No, Pancake House. They had really good. They had really good tapa and a very crispy waffle. That was over in the Philippines though. Dang, Not, nice job. I uh, just wanted, been watching your videos for about seven months. Just want to say thank you for what you do. I attended my car, uh, GT86 FRS BRZ. Oh, the FRS slash BRZ. That one is not too bad, but you got an annoying brake light in the way, so good job. Did you end up removing the brake light, or did you, were you able to tin around it with like a bulldozer? I always tin around them with a bulldozer. But that car, not too bad. It was actually one of my most expensive cars that I had to pay for to get fixed because I scratched a window. <laughs> Do you ever say no to a certain car? Yep, absolutely. When it comes to older stuff, I don't outright always say no. If it's something, it's, it depends on what it is. So there's jobs that I'll definitely take on. Like, so I did a... 95 Porsche 928, I think. Something like that. The 944 is the big pain in the ass one. The 928 wasn't as bad. Um, we did the full thing with the windshield. And he went in ceramic too. So there, it's, it's got to be worth, worth the time to do. And so on, on some of those things, it's like, I don't even like it. And I think it's, it's a little bit unfair, but that's just kind of like how the tinning world is. When you have, um, when you have an old car, where did I put, oh yeah, we'll use, we'll use the white one. See, totally fine. We even could use the shunk, but the shunk wouldn't be quite as good. It's a little flimsier. What was I talking about? I was talking about something that wasn't shank related. Oh yeah, older cars. Um, you know, somebody calls with like a 95 Taurus, and it's like, yeah, that one isn't too far out of, like it's, it's not a fun car to tint, but I've tinted enough of them where it's like, it's not too bad. But like then you start getting even older than that, and it's like, it's cars that 
people generally don't spend much money on, but you have to charge a lot more to tint because it's just like, yeah, I'm sorry. I know you don't want to spend a lot of money on this car and you want a nice job, but it's actually going to cost a lot of money to get a good job on this car because it just kind of sucks. <laughs> so there's a lot of that. So I had somebody call with like an old Buick, I think it was a Buick, an old Buick wagon with like really curved windows and stuff. And I was just like, look, <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta charge you like a full day to work on this car. And even then, I, it's just, you're gonna have mixed results on it. I, I, and he's like, oh, I had no idea. I just wanted to get my big fishbowl tinted. I'm like, yeah, you picked the wrong fishbowl. I don't know, we might have found a place though. There's lots of scrappy tinners though. So something that I don't wanna do, there's lots of other scrappy tinners that'll take on any type of work. And sometimes they'll just undercut me by a lot. And man, more power too if you wanna do that. The rubber tip on my bulldozer is coming off. Are they replaceable? Um, so these are kinda knocked off a lot. You can find these on Amazon but they're not an actual, like the official bulldozer. So there's the official bulldozers and they have this on the bottom. And then there's a lot of like generic knockoffs um, with a more yellowy blade on it. So if yours has like a more yellowed blade, um, it's just not usually made as well. I was looking around here cause I know I have a couple. Um, I bought them, oh, they're somewhere in the pile back there. I bought them for, uh, for an Amazon video. Um, and they're just, they're not as good. The original is actually better because of that. But as far as I know, I, th there isn't a way to fix it. Just buy another one. But I would suggest, you know, it's, it's a little bit more expensive on the spectrum of tinning tools. It's not, not, not expensive to buy, but it is, you know, versus like a shank. It does cost more. I, I, instead of buying one off of Amazon, um, getting one from there, they're, they're usually gonna last longer. So just keep that in mind for anybody that bought them anywhere. Say no to the fishbowl. Um, well, it's, it's up to you. You can take on any number of vehicles. It's just, there's, you know, I always, kind of felt like I needed to do every type of vehicle out there. And there's some part of me that still, like, I want to be that type of tenor. But on the other hand, I, I lean towards stuff that just makes more sense for my time in the business too. So I'm not gonna have 100 people calling me. Sorry, I was just double checking this. <laughs> It's the original I had for like two cars and the tip is coming off. Oh, that's no good. Try calling the tool or the person that you bought the tools from and see if they'll take care of you because that, that shouldn't be the case. That's, that's definitely no good. So they'll, some tool companies will like, they'll, if something breaks, like that's really premature. So maybe it's just a bad one. They should, I, I would think somebody's going to replace it for you. So just reach out to wherever you bought it from. Like I've seen some of them snap. So I haven't had one snap in person, but it could happen. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, older cars. There's just certain things that like, you know, if I'm gonna have 50 people calling about like a 90s car, then yeah, I'm gonna wanna probably make sure that I know how to do those. Like Model 3s, I think that's a car that'll give people some challenges in the beginning. And it's an intimidating back window if you've never done it. But the more you do them, it's, that's a car that's worth doing. There's so many more people with Model 3s. They're still making them, <laughs> right? Like they're hugely popular. So being able to know how to do something that like that versus like an old classic car, the Model 3 is gonna be way more important than the classic car for most businesses.
So don't don't beat yourself up if you just have those cars that kick your ass and you know charge accordingly for stuff like that too. Because like shoot, I had somebody ask about like a uh, an El Camino, and I was like, man, I'm sorry, I, I can probably get it done, and this is about what I got to charge for you, and I'm not even especially happy to take on the work. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I wasn't very positive about bringing it in. It's just like, it's just not something I specialize in. And he said, oh, okay, no problem. And he ended up bringing me a set of doors on his Jeep. And we did that. And then we were talking about his El Camino. And he's like, yeah, I called around and I found a guy that's going to do it for 250 And I'm like, whoa, more power to you. I hope he does a good job. <laughs> so you never know what somebody is actually going to do and, and put themselves in for a world of fun on something like that. And maybe it's just, they, they just, that's what they do. Where's my, oh, they're right here. I love tinning hashback windows because I don't have to break my back. <laughs> yeah, ones like these are especially nice. Is, this isn't even the hard one to do. There's a CRV. I wish this was the harder one. There's one that comes even like more of a swoop here. It, this is the pretty flat one, so there's not much to know about this. Everything just kind of stays out of the way. Like I'm not up against a spoiler. Not close anyways. Everything's just kind of easy. Even the wiper gets out of my way. I don't have to prop it up or anything. But then if you get into like the 90s, late 90s CRV, they have a bunch of hardware. Um, so I have, I've tinted my dad's car and I'm doing my first customer's car. How much would you charge if you were in my shoes? What kind of vehicle is it? Let's start there. What kind of fun are we in for? What was your dad's car? So like I get a baseline for what you've worked on. And did you tin it more than one? There's like, oh, there's a bunch of questions I could ask you. This is actually kind of fun. What was your dad's car? How many times did you tin it? And then what is the car that's coming in? Also, what film are you using? If you, if you can answer most of those, or all of those, that'll help out a lot because that'll make everything change around. Like if you just tinted the car once and it took you like a couple days to do, it's, it's gonna be a tough project. If it's you tinted your dad's car three, four, five times, you feel pretty comfortable and it was a pretty medium car, yeah, whatever you're taking on should be all right. I think you'll get through it one way or another. Just wanna know how much Estimated pain you got to go through. <laughs> but my broad answer until that would be charge whatever you'd want to charge retail. If you're offering a decent product along with it, just don't even sell yourself short. It's your first customer. Charge what you gotta charge, and take all day to do it. Just make sure you put out a good job. That'll pay for the roll. Um, it'll maybe cover your time, depending how much, um, you know, like if you charge 250 bucks to do the car, and you use like a color stable, you know, and you get one car out in a day, you just made 250 bucks in a day. I mean, you got expenses, but 
That's pretty cool. You do a whole week of that. Just one car a day. Starts adding up. Hmm. Turbo, turbo, natural, or supercharged? <laughs> I don't know. Turbo, supercharger's got a fun wine. Like, they both have their wines. I just, whatever, may, I'm more about, I've, I've never been so much about horsepower. I've always been about car styling instead. Because I think that's what really matters. <laughs> Uh, I need, ah, uh, we were like, I need more info, but that wasn't bad. 2005 SUV Cadillac. They make a lot of SUVs, but I, that kind of helps. Probably like an Escalade or something. I'm going to tennis Civic. So you haven't done a regular back window. That's going to be a little tougher. You've done like a, you've done some type of a hatchback back window because any Cadillac SUV doesn't have a back window like, like the Civic does. The Civic isn't going to be unusually curved unless you're tinning like the late 90s Civic hatch or something. Then it's going to be a pain in the ass. For whatever reason, that always seemed to be somebody's first car. I don't know why. But um, I would just charge a full car's worth. And the first window that you're going to want to do is that back window. We'll focus on the back window, and then you'll know you can do the rest of the car. I always like to get the hardest window out of the way first. Because if there's ever a window that I'm unsure of, I don't want the rest of the car tinted. And then all of a sudden, I've got the back window, and I just can't do it. So back window is going to be your biggest challenge. You've already done a bunch of doors. You've done some shrinking on a back window. Best bet, go for the back window. If you get that done, you get the rest of it. You might have some annoying quarter windows. I don't know what year the Civic is. But Civics aren't too bad. They have easy roll down windows, um, just annoying quarter windows sometimes. So that could just be like you try cutting it out a bunch of times. I think you can get it. Just charge normal prices, because you're going to go through some struggles. <sighs> it's a JDM type of dude. What even is that? Um, 2016 and 2020 Civic. Easy. Yeah, those are... It's just the quarters. The quarters get annoying. I'll spend more time on those damn little quarter windows than I will anything else. <laughs> But, like, first car was, like, a 2005 Cadillac, so it wouldn't be out of, out of the blue to hear an old, like, a 2000-whatever or earlier, like, a late 90s Civic hatch or something like that. You never know. I have any number of new people go, like, yeah, I got a Thunderbird. Is that a hard car to practice on? And it's, like, are you serious right now? I got a VW Beetle as my own personal vehicle. Is that hard to practice on? A little bit. A little bit. I've been trying to find someone to let me do their back window, but I can't find somebody. I'm a little, little nervous. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Like, I had it easier getting into this. I didn't have to try and find customers. I was working for a company. I was working for my dad's company. So it was like, that didn't make it easy. That just meant that I had somebody slightly more understanding up at the top. <laughs> and he was more invested in me learning how to do it, but he didn't tint. So it was just kind of like, just throwing, they're just throwing stuff at me. 
multiple cars in a day. And just like, and I had some training help and all that, but it was just, it was, it was real touch and go for a while. go. Looking pretty good as long as it's clean. Look at that. Perfect edges. My, my dad, my dad replaces windshields so I've been telling him to recommend people to me. Nice. That's a good way to do it. Broken windshields are also great to practice on by the way. Like if you didn't have a car to practice on really. Um, I, f I forgot about this. I made a video about this um, like a while ago. They're like glass shops are throwing away broken windshields all day. And like most of them are in a state where they'd have a crack in them or a couple of chips. They're totally fine to just throw some film on and learn how to shrink difficult things. You just put them up on a stand or something, and then you'll be, you'll be totally fine. Glass shops and tank go very good together as a business. Yeah, those ones do actually. There's a lot of front doors. It's an easy add-on for a lot of people getting a full windshield. And they're usually replacing a lot of windshields in a day, so you have a lot more opportunities. Oh yeah, that was a Mercedes windshield. Ah, it was so fancy. Yeah, and some of my older uh, live streams, I had like this apartment studio room. I put a windshield on the wall. It was a Mercedes windshield. You can use them for a cutting board. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. God, that's such a good tip. Where do you get glass boards? Just go get broken windshields. I think it's cool because they're already a little curved. I mean, I have that Civic back window right there. Um, but if you find something with, with like a light crack in it or something, right? Like it's not, not where it's all like, <sighs> but a lot of broken windshields, they've been taken out pretty clean. They'll have like a decent crack that runs through the whole thing, but it's no big deal. Go hang that on your wall, and there you go. There's a glass board. Also, you can find, like, some people recommend, uh, like, sliding glass doors you can find on marketplaces and stuff that people are just getting rid of from, like, old houses and whatnot. You can find any number of, like, glass windows that way. Oh, can you use them as a cutting board? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this is a... This is a storm window. Um, that's, and I put this on a plastic table for now. This is, this is my cutting surface. The, uh, this building had extra storm windows in the back because they were a window shop, I guess. I don't know if I can know. They were just here. I was like, oh, thank you. That's what this one is. <laughs> it was just like, wow, that's a good coincidence. Neat. <sighs> um... Love this man's sound effects. Oh, do I don't even notice them. Do I have some good sound effects today? <laughs> you, you can also you can also <laughs> you can also break into cars and tint them. That is something you could do. That's like One of those things where somebody would have mixed feelings on, like, oh, dang, I was going to go get my windows tinted, and then somebody broke in and tinted them for me. I should be mad, but I, I can't be. You did a good job. <laughs> Is four hours sitting outside bad? No. No, I, I don't think that's bad at all. 
shoot, I'll sometimes take four hours and tin it inside. <laughs> Tinning outside, though, comes with a lot of a lot of challenges. So you're just fighting against a lot, and then like it snows or it hurricanes or rains or whatever. So you know, scheduling jobs is one thing, and then having to schedule around weather problems is like a whole nother thing. So if you have somewhere that you can kind of like tuck it under a roof, you know, like a parking garage or something, that would, that would make it a little bit easier to deal with that type of stuff. But I'll always recommend, I, I always think there's some scrappy way to get into a building somewhere. It's just a matter of, of looking around and finding something. Because when you're always tinning outside and you're always against elements and stuff like that, it's, it's really tough. It's so much more difficult than it needs to be. So like, the rent here is like 2,400 bucks a month plus internet, plus utilities, right? So it costs money, but there's lots of options out there. And then you can also partner up with a company and just use their space. And that's arguably a better option for some people to partner up with a company because they're bringing you work. So it helps you get started in a different way. There's learning and then there's running a business. So the pros of just staying completely independent is you're building up your own name. That's really valuable. That's not something I've been doing for a long time. So when people call around, I could have been building up a name for the past 10 years, but I wasn't. I was working for other companies. People know Symbol Autoglass. People know Auto Tint City. They know Cartoons. They know any number of other places. Tint Squad. Any number of other places that I was tinting for. They don't know me. But as a business, that's a good thing because it means they're not reliant on, they're, they're not, like, as a company, you don't want to be dependent on one person. You know, you got to do what you got to do to protect yourself. You can keep operating as a business. So different ways to approach it. I definitely wish I was building up my own name over the past five years, but hey, here we are. I've learned a whole lot of other stuff in the meantime. Um, but it's not better than Detroit Tin Studio. Nothing's better than Detroit Tin Studio. <laughs> Uh, this is what I'm doing right now, working on this bumper wrap. Got the front end only with rain. I'm about getting, about to be here two hours. That's what I'm trying to do. Bumper wrap. Front. Got the front end in only with the rain. Are you tinning outside? I'm a little confused. Bumpers are tough. I know that much from paint protection film. I was just so over that. Paint, I'd be doing more paint protection film. I just didn't want to uh, do bumpers. <laughs> I hated doing bumpers. It's the worst. It's like, okay, so little paint protection film idea for you guys. Okay, so this one wouldn't be as bad. This is like mostly plastic. So it's like what you're doing for paint film is this. But there's so many bumpers that do all that. And for a hood, you got this part here. Overall, you stretch it over, tag it down, you'd be okay. Um, paint protection film, all you can do is like front ends, fenders, maybe mirrors and pillars. But then once you get into full bumpers, that's where like, you really want to be committed to it. Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Uh, 
Um, I couldn't get you in today. Is that something you'd want to schedule? Okay, uh, what kind of vehicle? A TRX Ram, nice. Um, did you want to do the full thing with the windshield? Okay, we have um, a few film options available um, with the full windshield especially. Um, I'd recommend going with probably a carbon or ceramic film. Um, so price points will vary depending on which one you go with, but starting would be 370, then 480, and then 650. 650 would be for the ceramic, so that's the top of the line film that I carry. So the biggest difference is gonna be heat rejection. There's gonna be a little bit of visual difference um, but you get a lot more performance out of the ceramic than anything else. You get a 90 or 80, 75 to 80% heat rejection. So come. What's that? Oh, so you don't want to do the back at all? Yeah, it's tinted in just uh, factory dyed glass, so it's not going to be the same as ceramic, but I can make, I, it's. Uh, um, it's not something I could get in today. All right, have a good one. Canon. Oh, that's fun. That's fun with very insistent people on getting it done today. The back's already tinted. It's like, you said you wanted the full thing. <laughs> this is funny. Um, the, uh, wait, sorry, it was, no, I thought, oh. Way too big to fit in the garage. Oh yeah, trucks will do that. That's no fun. That, ugh, it's such an interesting talk. Ugh. Sorry. Please read my comment up there. You can restate your comment. It's kind of more annoying to try and scroll back and find it. See, there's a lot. I'm not that great at skimming, so feel free to re-ask it. That was an interesting talk. I've gotten quite a bit of that lately. So every once in a while, I'll take something like that on. And man... <laughs> sometimes it's fine, and sometimes it's not. I've noticed, I've talked about this before, but I've noticed if you could schedule something literally tomorrow, the type of person that, that you're dealing with is <laughs> significantly different than the person that is like, I gotta get it in now. So it's not, I've, I've done plenty of work for people that want it done same day. And like that's how a lot of places that I've tended for have been. But I've just, from taking deposits for the past year and scheduling things out and then occasionally trying to take something in the same day, every time there's just been some unexplained things that just make it a total annoyance to do. And it, it, it's like if you're just kind of geared up to take that stuff on regularly, then you, like... It'll be a lot of people's business, and it is a lot of people's business, and you'll be totally fine with it. I just, I can't even necessarily explain it. Is that, what one do we grab? This is, right? Yeah, this is five. I was just double checking. I've been looking at five against a white car all this time, and so I keep like tripping myself out. Yeah, it's five. Of course it's five. So,
That is my favorite comment. Early morning, same day people are different from afternoon, same day people. Holy shit. That. I, I think I 100% agree with that. Dang. I didn't even put two and two together. I think you're absolutely right. Somebody that calls early in the morning looking to get something done is probably significantly different from somebody that is just calling at one o'clock in the afternoon to get it done now. <laughs> I think that is a huge distinction there. So if somebody wakes up a little bit earlier in the day, it's just not as la lazy, I don't know. <laughs> right, it's just like somebody that wakes up like, cause there's a there's a crowd of people. This would happen all the time in Pontiac. There's a crowd of people, and like we would joke about this up front. He's like, "Well, you gotta you gotta wait for for the neighborhood to wake up, and then come eleven, twelve, one o'clock. Everybody starts waking up, and then your phone starts ringing." <laughs> their money is just as good yeah the money is just as good but what, <laughs> what you deal with can be a world of difference you know so oh man I can't tell you the number of times it's like they call hey can I get my win you know it'd be like 12 30 1 o'clock 2 o'clock hey can I get my windows tinted today or four o'clock in the afternoon, they just got out of work. Can I get my windows tinted today? And then you say, yeah, come on down. And then you'd be waiting for like an hour for them to, like, okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes. And then an hour would go by and then they show up. And then they would still take them in. So like, it's annoying to leave money on the table like that, but then sometimes you take it on and you remind yourself real quick why you don't usually do that. So it's totally up to you. <laughs> it's just, oh my God. This is funny. Oh, I gotta get that top edge. Where's my, use this one. Easier to get in than I handled. There we go. Is that the outside? Oh, this whole time. I thought I had like this water line right up top. It wasn't, it's on the outside. No wonder I'm tripping myself out. All right, which way does this? Should start a no contact tinting option. Actually would be great. Just already have the car there. That's kind of what it's like when you tint for other shops. You just have people like, you know, the sales guy, they take care of the customers, right? And then they hand you the keys and you just have a car and then you pull the car out. And, and then they, they check the customer out everything's all good to go and then you move on to the next one. That's where like working, having a salesperson or working with another company, it that's where you can really maximize a lot of time and get stuff, get extra stuff done. So it's really hard to just five, six cars in a day when you're taking care of phone calls, you're checking customers in and out and then you have to talk to new people. All that little stuff adds up and takes time but the, the more you can keep this train going and you focus on the car, tinning things, and then just having somebody or you pull them in and out, but all the other things are taken care of, that saves you, it saves you a lot. That's, that's getting two, three extra cars in in a day. It is nice. It is nice to be able to pull in a car or like have somebody else pull in the car 
and like other things are getting done. <laughs> I, that's what that's what being a business really is. It's like you don't have to do everything 100% yourself. Well, being a more traditional one, right? Everything starts happening and then you don't always have to be there or you don't always have to be on top of it all. Those afternoon same day people ain't worth a headache for the business, less stress, more efficient. I, I, I like that a lot. I just, I like, I knew that, but I didn't really think of it that way. It's like, you're totally right. The afternoon, later in the, it's like, I just pick up the phone and you get a vibe from somebody. And you're just like, I just don't want to deal with this. I don't know what I'm saving myself from right now, but I know whatever I'm getting into feels like it's going to be a headache. They say they, they're going to be right down, and maybe they are. Maybe they will be right down. Maybe they'll come down in an hour. Then they drop off the car, and now you're like, okay, come pick it up. And then you're, you're standing there waiting for them to come pick up the car, and they're just... They have other stuff to do. <laughs> like, who knows? So, any, any number of, any number of things. But then you have to worry about that hour late car because sales guy needs that too. Yup. Yup, for sure. It just, it adds to the pile. I can't, I can't tell you the amount of times we had somebody that was like, we would be wrapping up the day at like, this is, this is at my dad's shop a while ago. Um, and I get it. Like there were, he, he had overhead, he had a lot of things to pay for. So at the bottom line, no matter how much we complain and groan, they got to get stuff done or they got to, they got to get, they got to keep money coming in or we don't have a business. So there's always that, that fight between people doing the work and people trying to get the numbers on the board. There were those times where we'd have a pretty decent day and then it, we'd just be wrapping up a little bit early. And then it was 4.30, we'd close at six, and then it was 4.30 and then somebody would call and say they could be down in 20 minutes. And then we're, before you know it, it's five o'clock and we're like, He's still not here yet. Well, you know, give him, give him a little bit. And then we would just be packing up to leave. And then they roll in at 5.15. <laughs> and what do they do? We're not closed yet. Oh, yeah, we're bringing it in. There you go. They're staying until 6.30, boys. Oh, it's so annoying. You get, you get you, that slowdown. You get geared up, ready to leave. Nope. Glad I caught the last part of the stream. Have a great rest of the stream, bud. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Weight room looks good. Thank you. Doesn't it? Okay, should we? We're gonna do a windshield strip, but I'll show. I'll show those of you that are here, um, if you haven't seen it already. So I have been. That's what all this is right now. I didn't know how to do. Like I, I know how to paint walls. I don't know how to do a floor, and there's like the molding and stuff. So I had to look up a lot of videos and try and learn some stuff and there's some of it that's a little sketchy but this is what the showroom looks like now so we did that is just my rgb fun i don't know my accent piece that i, that I came up with i think it's super cool um so uh these are acoustic tiles you can find them all over amazon um it's really popular in the gaming live streaming space um, but I have, this is a 550 square foot space, and I really know that because of, <laughs> I had to measure everything and buy all the flooring, so now I actually know the size of this whole thing. So 550 square feet, um, and I don't build walls, I don't know how to build counters, I, and I just, I literally, I replaced the floor, I painted from there 
all the way around to here. This is all white now. Um, it was like this ugly olive, and then they sprayed uh, white along this whole trim, but it was all like olive against just like <laughs> spray paint. Super ugly. And then some of the, I have, I'm going to replace some of those tiles there. And we've replaced some of them already, but the, the bigger, biggest other thing was the lighting. So we had like three, 3200K bulbs up here. So they look dingy yellow. The plastic was all dingy yellow. So I replaced all the, the covers and then I replaced it with 6500 daylight bulbs. So it just gives it a whole different feel. Nice clean floors. And then that crazy shenanigans over on the wall. It's a little bit crazy right now. I'm gonna, tune, I'm gonna change the lights a little bit, like as far as what patterns they're doing, but they can do that trail thingy. So they're super cool. Um, yeah, it just kind of ties everything in together. This, this wall was already painted that way. So we left it for now. And I think the whole thing just looks super, super clean. So this couch was here, the rug was here. The table, that's all stuff that was in here as a showroom before, but now it at least feels ah, so much better than it, than it did before. So very, very happy with this. When people walk in through that door, it doesn't feel as scary anymore. So yay. Acoustic tiles, they're fun. That I feel like those acoustic tiles are kind of like similar to the system for like putting film on the wall. It's one of those things that you can do to really break up a space. Because we had like just the GeoShield banners there, or the display boards. So I've actually never really shown these up close, but I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen them. Um, so they have the different slides, 50, 35, 20, and 5. So I'll explain all the films that I have, but it was just those on big white walls. So I, like, I wanted to do something, but I, I didn't know what to do. And then the more I looked around, I was like, oh, I could maybe try those sound panels. And then I had the idea to put LED strips around them. So I can do any number of patterns and stuff like that. Is dubstep playing in there? <laughs> no, but it looks like it. <laughs> but yeah, now it's way cooler. And now when you look through this window, it's like, ah! <laughs> It's fun. I like it. I'm very happy with it. That I never took you guys up front, hardly at all, because I was never, I hated it. It was always like that eyesore up front, and I just want to get your car in here. We'll focus on this space. And then after about, I mean, shoot, I've been in this space for a year, over a year now. Then we finally did it. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I've never seen this before. Honda, why you do this? Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. Wait, what? Sorry, I gotta do a strip here. This is different. There's some funkiness going on here. It's a whole dot matrix. What did I, what did I get myself into? That doesn't make any sense. I've never seen that. Never seen that. This looks like a bordered edge though. What? This is just super soft. Oh, funny. What the hell? No, that is a bordered edge. Oh, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Never, not really, not the weirdest thing ever. Wow. Okay, Honda, you win weird point. Okay, so they laminate. Okay. Let me try. So they have, what time is it? 12.45, okay, we're still doing good on time. Usually you can see a hard ceramic edge all the way around here, but there's actually dots that go through this whole thing. So what they did is these dots are laminated in between the film and the glass, and then there's a ceramic edge that is still there, but it goes around this whole thing, but you can't see it because they overlay dots over it. 
then kind of blended it in together. So from here, this is all ceramic border, right? Yep. It's not much to work with, but it is there. <sighs> Shit, man. How? I don't want to take this off. I have camera systems here. Okay. It's going to be a little harder to line up, but we can do it. We got to do a windshield strip on this. I think I'm just going to go to the bottom of here and just go straight across. They were talking about like a... They, they weren't talking about a big windshield strip anyways. So, congrats. I'm proud of you. Been here since your one car garage videos came a long way. Thank you. Yeah, what a difference, man. And, like, I'm all for... There we go. Now I can see it a lot better. I just didn't... It was hard to believe that that's actually a dot matrix border, but it is. Okay, so we just got to cut this tight now. Hopefully we get it. It's a little hard to see. So, I am not like a construction dude. I, I can look up a lot of videos, I can learn a lot of things. One thing I have never been very good at is really, like if you want me to build a table, it'll take me far longer to un like work out in my head how long I need to cut things and how I need to arrange them so it all fits together. So just go to Ikea and buy a table and put it together. So like I can follow instructions and stuff like that. I am just not crafty. Never been good at that. Um, but there's, there's a lot of things that are in the realm of, you know, it takes a little bit to learn, but they make whatever you're doing easy enough to wear, you know, like a snap together flooring. That's not, that, that's easy to do. The hard part is line, is cutting all your edges right and getting the whole thing lined up. And so as you're going, you're having to trim boards and stuff like that to the right lengths and getting them to all lock together because you still want a good looking floor at the end of the day. <laughs> so, figured out that much. Um, and then the, like another part is like, okay, how's this going to like lock to the floor? Do we have to put a bunch of glue down and try and like stick all the boards and like that just sounds like a lot of mess and a lot of hassle. Um, well, it wasn't bad because we were doing, um, I came across this video and they, they mentioned a floating floor and I was like, what is that? So they take the snap together boards and then they put what is called an underlayment and so the boards are literally not fixed to the ground they're just kind of like snug together and I was like oh like these really people do that okay <laughs> so that's what that's what we opted to going for because if I wanted to do like an epoxy floor I ripped up a bunch of carpet and the carpet was uh had a bunch of glue on the floor so we would have had to find a way to strip all that out. And just ripping the carpet up off the floor was like removing nasty old window tint off of a car. It was not fun. So you guys think we got it bad. Carpet people have it really bad too. But I'm sure they have like heavy duty machine tools for some of that too. I'm trying to cut this. I thought this edge was like flat, but maybe not. Oh, there. I don't know why my uh, windshield strip roll isn't super nice on the edges, so we are making it happen, Captain. What places can I buy the tape at? Um, my store. My tint stuff, sorry, tint stuff. 
Oh, did it not not do a thing? Tint stuff. Sun distributing. And tint depot. Carpet people bring a lot of awesome cleaner. Do they actually use, they there's they use they don't use awesome. Does awesome work as a carpet <laughs> floor cleaner? Probably like me and adhesive remover. And I don't know where I want to line this up. I feel like there. That would be really funny if it, it happened to be one of those things. <laughs> I think that looks better. Yeah, I've got to cover up those dots, so we'll make that sliver go all the way there. That'll be fine. Annoying, but fine. It's actually a really good height, though. Just covering up most of that. Use awesome to clean my floors in my tin studio every week. <laughs> that makes sense. We used it to do like that's it's it's a broad purpose cleaner. So like, works great for window tint adhesive remover magically. But it, it's like they got like ten thousand things that it it can be used for. It could be used on everything. Oh, we should change this blade. Why don't you just go change the blade? Because I'm lazy. Something like that. All right, we'll see how this tucks in. And then we'll match it up on the other side. Then we'll change the blade. Yeah, they got a whole list down the bottle of what that stuff will work on. I, re I redid the flooring in my house, just like yours turned out nice. That's awesome. It's, I don't feel remotely confident lining it up as particular as I would be at home. <laughs> I'm not, I was not, I could show you a couple of edges where you guys would go like, mmm, okay. <laughs> where if it was a window tint gap, you'd be like, yeah, that's not going to fly. But here, it's like, you don't know until you get really close. <laughs> so it's like, it's good, and I'm really happy with it, and most of the stuff is all covered. There's just like, when you get into like the doors, um, there's there's some spots that are like, oh, but it's so much better, so much better than it was. So I learned enough about it to where if I'm gonna do this on like a, like if I'm gonna remodel a house, right? I'm gonna pay somebody to do that. I know, it's like getting my windows tinted. I wanna pay somebody to do that. If I could sell, if I could sell ceramic tint jobs on the showroom that I had before, this is a significant upgrade. Uh, that's all. Like I, w that's why I didn't want to stream it either. Is because I was I was really trying to learn how to even do it, so I could have like a halfway decent job. Why are you using? Why are you using two pieces rather than one single one? Because we're going to hopefully line up this center. 
and you'll never see us splice. It's too much, like it's too fine of a little line there to really get it all in one piece in any in any capacity that makes sense. So a lot of a lot of windshield strips with something in the middle like this, you can do in two pieces. It just makes it easier to install. Um, we have like this little hang down right here, and we're gonna we're gonna match it up. So that also gives me the ability to kind of like tweak it just a little bit and kind of straighten it out a little bit more than if it was completely connected. But getting this whole thing all locked down perfectly straight is a real chore. Justin Evans super chatted five dollars for doors before cutting the top. I noticed you, you shift gotten... the film back after cutting the oh, back side. Yeah. Are you lining up the front edge? Okay. Justin with the five, thank you. Um What was it? Justin with the five for doors before cutting the top. I noticed you shift the film back after cutting the backside edge of the line. Are you lining up the front edge or do you just shift it back? So all I'm doing is when I'm shifting it back and forth is I'm creating the same amount of overlap. Thank you so much for the five. So when you, uh, I cut like one edge, it could be the small edge or the long edge, either one. Um, you cut it, you shift it over about a quarter of an inch. So really, like, at, sometimes a half inch, depending on the seal. So really, like, on this type of seal, I'll just pull it all the way over here. And then I'll shift it, and then I'll cut one edge. Sorry, I'll cut it, then shift it, and then cut this edge, and then shift it back half as much. So then I'll have an even amount of overlap on both sides, and then I'll cut my top edge. There we go. I bought your tools and I fell in love with the green squeegee. Aw, oh, that's cool. I'm glad you like it. Another strong one. It's not mine, but I, I like this is before I started using the fusion ones. The fusion turbos are super nice too. One of those squeegees, like I hated the yellow turbo, so that's like I never I'd always cut down like a a blue max or other fusion squeegee and use that for like my quarter windows and stuff. And those still work great, but then I finally tried a fusion turbo. And those are, ugh, finally they make a good, they make a good turbo. Because the original yellow turbo sucks. <laughs> is it true I have the orange turbo have you tried that one I haven't I have it right here though I got I got the whole rainbow so I should I picked up the ones that I just like the feel of the most was like the green and the pink I think those are the softest though so orange I'll try that one out I should just let me grab it I can use it on this windshield trip <laughs> it's double, man. <laughs> uh, we put that one on every year. Is it true ceramic tint is darker on the outside than the inside, or are people just watching TikTok? It's uh, it's not true. So. You can have films appear darker based on like the tone of the film, but being ceramic or being carbon isn't the reason. It's more of like a secondary reason. So it's like that carbon just happens to have a darker tone to it. 
but you could have the same type of look with a dyed film. So it, it really just, you know, I, when I talk to people, um, though, I'll, I'll stir up a conversation between dyed carbon and ceramic, trying to figure out if they've already looked for something or they kind of have heard about it. But ceramic can range in price from any manufacturer and be completely different and crappy from one and be amazing from another one. You know, like a ceramic coating. You have ones that'll fail inside of a week and you have ones that'll last for years. But, you know, if you just want to call and talk about it as a ceramic coating, like, oh, it's just ceramic coating, right? So, but people are just kind of learning that there is differences between films. So it's like before you would have a lot of people calling around and just they just want tint. So if you talked about carbon, they'd, they'd just be like, oh, what? No, I just want, I want tint. You're like, yeah, it is tint. Oh, I thought it's all the same. And then you have to have a conversation of, no, it's not all the same. And then they like half believe you, half don't believe you. They, a lot of people that just call feel like they're being sold. I noticed ceramic has a slight blue tone when you hold a light to it. What type of light and what ceramic? Because that, that'd be interesting. I haven't really ever noticed that. But I'd say it might depend on, like if, you, if you've noticed that with like a handful of ceramics, that's actually a really cool little thing. Because I would love there to be a way to just tell if a film is ceramic without knowing, like, without asking a customer. If somebody brought in their car and they were like, yeah, can you tell me what type of film I have on there? N not really, no. If it's a hot day, I can sit in your car <laughs> and then I could tell. But if I just pull it into my shop, I put a heat bulb up to it, and then I could probably tell you if it is or not. But it, it gets more into the nuances there. But it's one of those things where if you're driving around with no ceramic, you know you're not driving around with it if you've had it before. So as soon as you move to ceramic, you just stop feeling that heat from the sun. And anything else becomes annoying. I swear, it is. You like, you feel your legs are starting to burn a little bit or like your skin is and you're just like, what, I'm just uncomfortable now. It's that IR heat. You don't shrink sun strips? Uh, generally no, but you absolutely can. So I shrink most everything. Sun strips are usually small enough to where you don't have to. Um, and there's a lot more window to squeegee them out. So occasionally, I'll have a little finger here or there that I gotta shrink out, but it's not bad. Oh, did I not pull this over far enough? Please tell me. Please tell me I did. Oh, I did. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see a seam? I don't see a seam. Perfect. That's what we're going for. I'm so happy I had an area to tuck that in. I thought Honda was just like completely I thought Honda was just doing something wild. I couldn't believe, like, every windshield has a dot matrix border. And this has it, but then it doesn't. So they laminate dots all through the top. Really weird. But it doesn't, like, it doesn't look weird. It's just as long as they give you, what I was hoping was they didn't pull a Kia. So Kia, they've been doing housings with dots all over the top. So you pull the housing down and it's just dots. There's no like ceramic border to hide all the electronic stuff. Ooh, we got a different turbo. We gotta go, we gotta try it. We're gonna try, okay, we're gonna try, this one's looking a little dirty anyways. We're gonna try the orange one. It's a little stiffer. As you go through the spectrum, but I'm glad I have it here. It's nice. 
feel like it just has to come down just a little bit more. Maybe it's the one that I have. See those? This is what I didn't like about the turbo. I'm not trying to, maybe I just got a bad one. Whenever I can see like little streaks left behind, it'll squeegee out enough water, but when I'm cleaning with it. So let's see what this pink one's doing. It's been a little bit. It's got some, it's got some crap on it. Let's see what this looks like right now. And no, we still got it. We still got some streaks on this. Maybe it's just the way that they are. Or maybe it's worn out. I swear when I first used it, I didn't have those. So they're pretty much the same. This one's a little harder. And I like the softer one a little bit better, but you can push out a little bit more water with something like this. There we go. There we go. Yay! So now we have a total windshield strip. I don't feel like a hack with it. You're the man. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's wipe this off. I need new towels. These have uh, these have been used. Yeah, let me know how you like the pink one. I like the green one and the pink one. But I've had it for a little bit. I just like to not see trails when I squeegee, so it could have been just a random one, but I'm seeing it right now with the pink ones too, so I don't know what the heck. <laughs> uh, when are you streaming again? Uh, I think tomorrow. I think tomorrow we have an, a late stream. Uh, you guys remember, I'm like pretty sure I'm gonna stream it. We did a, uh, we did a full car and limo. It was actually, I think, the last stream that we did. And he wants to get his windshield tinted. <laughs> when I delivered that car. Like, it was so quick. He, like, I had my garage door open, and I hate, I hate when this happened. I purposefully have to leave my garage door closed, or else people will just walk in the garage door and think that's where they're supposed to be. And then they don't see, like, no, I have an upfront area. So the problem is whenever they come back, they're like knocking on the garage door and they think that I'm closed or something. But we're, uh, we're doing his windshield. He was in and out so fast that he's like, you didn't do the windshield. I was like, you got limo. No, I don't do, <laughs> I don't do windshields in limo. It's like, yeah, 240, windshield's an extra 130. He's like, oh. So now he's coming back to do the full windshield. What's your favorite car to tint and why? Um, probably like a Malibu, because it's easy. Anything that's easy, that's my favorite. Has nothing, t has nothing to do. Post signs use other entrance. I know, I know. I, just, I gotta do it. I've had to do that for like the past year. Detroit Tint Studio down a little farther. I'm a bad business runner, kind of. <laughs> These are all those little things where it's like. Okay, I need like, like I'm half tempted to like talk to my graphic designer and make something cool or I can just go to the store and buy some lettering and just put that up there, right? So it's like, I always like doing something that looks a little more interesting 
but then it's like sometimes I just get so caught up in like the idea of that and then it gets put off. So then it, nothing gets put on there at all. And that's kind of what's happened with the whole frontage. <laughs> like just nothing gets done. I have a, yes, we have a magnetic Detroit Tint Studio sign, but it is, it is kind of small. It's very unwelcoming. Like, it, unless you know you're coming here to get an appointment, you really, like, if you're just, like, oh, I look up Detroit Tint Studio on maps, and I want to go there and get my car tinted, so I'm just going to go walk in. <laughs> More, there's been quite a few times I get phone calls and they're like, hey, uh, I was wondering if I could get a quote. I'm actually here at the building, I think. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not here right now. Oh, okay, I didn't even know if I was at the right place. <laughs> and then if you go to the front of the building, there's, I'm suite 108, there's suite 107 and then 109. So people get confused that way, too. They're like, where's <laughs> Nick? Nick's partial to the magnet sign. <laughs> he ordered that one. I got to do something for, like, the small window that we have, too. But again, like, now I feel more like getting around to doing it. but I, I just haven't yet. Ooh, I've had my, I've had my windows tinted on my Tesla for two years. The seal is less a mark. Should I complain to the tinner? Ooh, it's not, I'm gonna, this is actually not, definitely not their fault. Um, I mean, it bothers you, so you'd want to get them taken care of. That's an interesting situation because it's the car that's causing the problem. It could be a combo of the film that was used and the car because like a good quality film shouldn't leave marks like that. But they're, they're, they're frameless doors and those windows every time they get closed they're shifting up and against it. So probably what's happening is like you could have some light dirt like, so let's pretend this is your, your window framing. So it's a frameless window, closes, and then it's rubbing up and down this every time you open and close the doors. Well, as this just starts to get general dirt built up on it, it dirt will just start wearing into the tent. It'll be like sandpaper over time. So might be film, but could also very well just be like, that's just kind of how it's gonna be with the Tesla. But this is the first time that I've heard of it. So, talk to the shop and see if there's any way, like whatever film that they used, they might be able to get that job comped under warranty then. And then in that case, they wouldn't really be upset, right? Problem is, when shops just take on all their own warranties, they just, everything's out of pocket. Where when you have a better film company, they'll work with you and they'll get the film and situation and they'll, they'll take on, on that part of the bill. But it's, it's a tricky situation. It's like, uh, so 2010, um, Chrysler, no, Ford like 500 and similar vehicles. Um, they have harder rubber seals down here, and there's a lot of dirt that'll catch right here. And then as the window goes up and down, you'll have wear lines, and they'll scratch the outside of the window as along with the film. And you could have any film on there. That's just the way the vehicle is going to be. So you have like you have some major problems there that the tinner just. It's not, it's unfortunately not their fault. It's just kind of how the vehicle is. So with a frameless door like that, <laughs> I haven't heard of anything though. So 
it's, uh, you might you, you just talk to the shop and let them know and see if there's something that they can do. I've been missing the whole stream. They're making me work over here. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Sun Distributing. Rick is funny at Sun Distributing. He says everybody else makes him work. I, I blame you. I blame you. You set, you set yourself up to be worked that way. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, I gotta go do a bunch of flat glass jobs. And at some point... <laughs> You set your you set yourself up for it. Um, doesn't seem to be scratched. It's more of the pressure on the seal when the window is first closed or closed first installed. That could be. Maybe it should be dried out a little bit more. It's a nuanced thing. It's like one of those little things where the best way to do it would be Canon would be to install it. and then like let it dry and then close it. But I mean, I, I countless windows, I tint and then roll them up into the seal so there's that pressure there still. Um, I would really like to just have this discussion in the Facebook group, that's a good one. Um, there's a lot more people that have installed Tesla. So if you, can, if you can set the focus on like your phone camera and get some really good shots of like it distorted or, or whatever, um, post them in my group. Um, I'll link it. So just say it with, I want to get, like, I'm a, um, I had my Tesla tinted, and I'm, like, it looks weird up here. Have you guys ever seen this before? Or I, I'm not sure how to get this addressed. Like, because I, I think that's pretty fair. Because sometimes there's a bunch of hot heads. I try and temper it as much as I can. But sometimes there's tinners that are like, Why be so picky with the tint after two years? It's, dude, he, he bought a Tesla. He, it's, some, some people are buying those cars to just keep for as long as they can. And when you get a film with a color-stable warranty, it's like, I, I'd imagine it's something that just kind of like wore into the film over time. So where it was fine in the beginning, then it starts showing up more. So I, I know I've, I've seen similar things with windows over time. Like it, it can happen, but I argue that it's probably the quality of film mixed with a little bit of like what's actually happening there. So those windows are getting a lot of wear. So if the film it could just be like, I'd love to see a Tesla with a quality film three, four years down the road and compare it to like what's going on there. Um, Facebook group slash uh, Tinternet. I think it's an interesting discussion, but I dropped the link in chat for you, so post it if you want. Any chance you could sell Detroit Tint Studio stickers? I have them. Um, I'm giving them out with orders. They didn't exactly turn out super well. So I want to order some different ones. Uh, but we've been trying to throw them in. So if you order like a roll of glass aid, you get a couple stickers and stuff. We've just been trying to throw them in with every order. At least I try and remember to throw them in every order. Uh, that's why, <laughs> there you go. That's why you never keep a shop open longer than two years. That's it, 100%. If you install a film that's made to not last, then you just keep on changing that business name, keep on moving, keep those prices low. I don't like how the stickers are clear, can't really see the name. I like that. Dang it. I did that on purpose. I wanted them on a clear thing so people could put, like, if they were a better quality print, like, everything else that we've ordered from them was fine. So I was like, yeah, I'll get some clear stickers. And then we got them, and then they were, the, like, the, the colors were, like, just kind of off. And I'm like, oh, whatever. So the, 
I had them printed on a clear material so you could put them on like anything and then you see that like you put them on a window or something like that. I did it on purpose. Otherwise, it'd just be a big white square too. So I don't really like that. But you like that. Maybe that's why the colors are weird. Maybe because they're supposed to be on a white backing. Maybe I should go try this. Hmm. No, I did put them on a white backing. They didn't look good. Never mind. I already did that. No, this, the prints off just... Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> Do you die cut stickers? Yeah, these were... The, I, so I ordered... Uh, the company that I order lots of labels through, they do a really good job on all the Glass Aid ones. So it was kind of just like, I'm going to order stickers along with it. They don't do die cut, but they are like pretty economical. So that's, I was just getting them thrown to orders. But some of these, some of these can be like, I, I know like this is, this is the good one and they got a white background and the Tint Wiz does an amazing job on their stickers and look, they even have ones that are all shiny. Look at that. That's super cool. Um, these, these, these get expensive. <laughs> Especially when you're throwing a bunch of free of them in, in packs and stuff. They, they, they add up. What is it? Some of them, like, some of those sites are, like, they're, like, 50 cents a sticker. So, I don't know. I wasn't going to get them just to sell them. It was just kind of, like, get them to throw them in. Look at this shirt. Look at this direct-to-print shirt fading. No fun. Okay. Um, well, I guess I got to let this customer know that their vehicle is all set. They have an appointment at like two, so they will definitely be here for that. Well, they have like another appointment somewhere else at two, two thirty. Matt's a ballin'. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that one? <laughs> <laughs> Rick. Dinner's like stickers, just like cats like empty boxes. <laughs> I get it. I, I if there's one thing that I've been asked a bunch about, it's stickers. It's not t shirts, it's not hoodies, it's stickers. It's very true. That makes sense. Uh but like I wanted them on a clear I guess I'll just do okay, so if we do a version two, we'll get some proper die cut stickers. Um I was again, this is one of those this is one of those creative things that I get stuck on and then nothing gets done. So like this is the way that I probably should just do the stickers, but then they have like options like this. It's like, ooh, they're all shiny and cool and stuff. But then the colors just aren't as bright, but it, it's like, you know what I mean? It's just a whole different look. And then I could do clear and you could put them on a window, like just all types of stuff. And then nothing gets done. That's how, that's how I ended up with a hexagon wall. Because it was like, no, I, I can't just put these up here and hang some shelves on the wall and put some crap on it. I got to do something fun. And then, then I put an RGB strip on it. I was trying the windshield on a Ford Fusion. Any tips? Kind of hard. Uh, keep practicing. Watch some videos. It is a bigger windshield. The Fusion is tall. Maybe some, ta maybe some temporary tattoos. Actually... That sounds like a fun idea. Detroit Tint Studio temporary tattoos. I would love those. That would be awesome. Oh, I got to see how to get those done. <laughs> I really like I really like that idea. I think people would actually do it just for fun. I'll throw them in with orders. That would be super oh, I'm going to I'm going to try and mark that down and look into that. How's the baby? The baby is good. He is taking multiple steps now. I, I don't know if you caught in the Facebook group, he was helping build the showroom. Oh, okay, I got to shout out some super chats here really quick. Um, so big thank you to all the super chats, uh, Justin, BRJ, Max, and LKB. Thank you so much for all the support today. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, 
<laughs> quote it. Early morning, same day people are different from same day afternoon people. Absolutely. Keep that in mind. That is what we learned most today. People calling at 12, 1, 2 o'clock to get in same day are different from people calling at 8, 9, 10 o'clock to get in the same day. <laughs> 100%. It was. Is there any way I can, like, click on my profile? How do I... Oh, sweet. Okay, okay, here. I can show it. I figured out how to find out what I posted in my own group. Um, so we're going to switch over to here. Look at this. No, that's not it. it. That one. Let me start it back over. This is my son. Um, this is my son, Lucas. It's coming along. Look. We brought him over to the shop, and he was mostly watching his show. But when, it, when we had the floor down, <laughs> we let him crawl all over it, and it was cute. But he would constantly venture off this way, where all the nasty glue is, and it's like, ah. And he's going to put something in his mouth. But isn't that adorable? <laughs> Crawling over, helping out. And then, I don't know if I had, oh yeah, this is what it looked like before. Um, through carpet removal, man. This has must have some of that GeoShield glue on it. <laughs> so we have it like stripped in sections. See, look at how you much know, I watched the sand videos. there was. I know exactly what I'm doing. Look, see, it was all dingy brown. This is all glue underneath it. And uh, man, even and that, then you have the nasty just, brown couch and stuff like stuff that. It's not fun to pull. We had already so, painted the walls um, though. We're going to at that be point. putting some type of laminate wood flooring down. Sure. That see this? So it was all like the lighter color. That's it all vacuumed. It was literally like all sand. It just was disgusting. Too much. Way too much dirt to have to vacuum up. I had a, a shop vac that was literally like full of sand at the end of it. It was just, it was bad. <laughs> oh, but that's all done. All righty. Well, and with that, uh, I think I will be live tomorrow. We'll figure out the sticker delay. Thank you all for hanging out today. Everybody smash the like button, smash it. Does snap shrinking it help a little? Um, I like snap shrinking. I don't remember specifically what I was talking about when you asked that, though. Uh, but any, like, snap shrinking doors, that's the way I do them. It helps a bunch with doors. I don't do it as much for, like, back windows and stuff. All righty. Well, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out. Glad we could do this. Glad that I have an actual showroom done. I think they're here to pick up the car, so I got to go. All right.